Rockies basically turned and ran during this latest uh, encounter. And I don't know if that's true or not. Um, he certainly has more information than I do. But the simple fact is if we can re-engage with the, the government and with the military and train them and embed uh, troops with them and narrow the influence of the Shia militia uh, and restore what existed uh, when uh, the president came into power, which was a fragile but uh, but a secure Iraq, then we're going be far better off than what we have today. But I guess what I'm asking is if they won't do it, we can't do it for them. No, exactly right. But we, we should be engaged to, to make it possible for them to do it. That's the point. When we pull back, the Iraqi military was not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it was a it was it was battle tested and it was uh, Iraq was a far more secure place. As we pull back all of the sectarian influences began. They, took, they started firing the professionals and putting in political hacks. Uh, and, and that's the problem. We did not engage politically. And when we left militarily, we left a huge war. Governor, let's uh, talk a little bit about politics. It's pretty obvious that you're running for president. You're going around the country. You're raising huge amounts of uh, money for your super PAC, uh, in addition to making all the traditional campaign stops everywhere. Watchdog groups and some of your opponents are saying you're really uh, maybe violating campaign laws and that uh, the Attorney General ought to be investigating because they they point out that you can't raise money and, and coordinate strategy uh, with these super PACs. Uh, and once you declare as a candidate, uh, you can't do that anymore. Uh, do you think in some way you may be just at least violating the spirit of the law? Do you feel that uh, you have violated the law? Of course not. I would never do that. And, uh, I'm nearing the end of this journey of, of traveling and listening to people, garnering, trying to get a sense of whether my candidacy would be uh, viable. Uh, we're going to complete, completely adhere to the law for sure. But politics is politics. There's always uh, people that are going to be parking on the sidelines. And should I be a candidate? And that will be in the relatively near future where that decision will be made. There will be no coordination at all within any super plan. Now, you're not telling me that there is a possibility that you may not run. I, I, look, I hope I, I hope I run. To be honest with you, I'd like to run, but I haven't made the decision. Well, what would have to happen between now and then to convince you not to run? Who knows? I learned not to answer a lot of hypothetical questions. <laughs> you probably not run. I hope so. I hope I hope I'm a candidate in the in the near future. Let me if I am a candidate, by the way, have a chance to talk about my reference, share my heart, and offer ideas that will give people a sense that the other future might be brighter than what we have today. Last year, you said, and I'm going to quote you, anyone running for president should be prepared to quote lose the primary to win the general election without violating your principles. What hot button issues? Would you be willing to separate yourself from, say, the white men of your party to carry out that, that philosophy? Yeah, well, for when I said that, I don't mean I'm going to go out of my way to lose the primary because then you have no chance of winning the general. But the simple point is, I think people are so disaffected and believe and so cynical about politicians and politics, they don't want to hear someone say, well, I'm for this now, and then immediately shift back to another position for the general election. Those days, if they ever existed, are over. Uh, so I have views that, that are uh, different than some in our party, and they, you know, that's, that's what we'll sort out. If I'm a candidate, I'll go, well, I'm not going to back down on views on immigration, for example. I think we have a, an immigration problem. It's, it's a system that's broken. The legal system is broken. We need to narrow family petition, expand economic immigrants, we need to enforce the law. And we can't use this, keep having this be a political issue when we're missing the opportunity to bring high growth that everybody can benefit. Well, let me just ask you about that. You have said in the past that you do support a PAC uh, for legal citizenship and residency for the 11 million people here in this country uh, that are here uh, illegally. Uh, a lot of your 